Hi all, welcome to my video demonstration on nebulization procedure. You have already gone through the class notes and written assignment about nebulization. Before starting with the demonstration, we can see some of the theory part of nebulization. Nebulization is a type of topical administration of medications directly into the mucous membrane of the respiratory tract. For that, you can use an inhalation method. So what is an inhalation? It is the act of drawing in air, vapor, gas into the lungs that will provide both local and general effect. There are mainly two types of inhalation that is dry inhalation and moist inhalation. Example of moist inhalation is steam inhalation. Next we can see regarding dry inhalation. Dry inhalation means it is the inhalation of gases or fumes from the volatile drugs or burning medications. Examples are inhalation of gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, ether, chloroform, nitrous oxide or volatile drugs etc. And then another important type of dry inhalation is aerosol therapy or aerosol spray. So what is an aerosol spray? It is a fine suspension of a liquid or powder medication that delivers into the respiratory tract. Examples are nebulizers and meter dose inhalers. Next we can see regarding definition of nebulization. So nebulization is a process of dispersing a liquid medication into microscopic particles and delivering into the lungs when a patient inhales. One of the advantage of uh, uh, nebulization is it will deliver a fine particles of medications like about 0.05 to 0.5 micron sized medications particle will be entered into the deeper respiratory tract also. So that can be easily administered into the patient with the, an acute attack of asthma or dyspnea. And also it is uh, uh, a procedure which is not needed a much cooperation from patient also. Then next we can see the purposes of nebulization. So first purpose is to help, help to administer medication directly into the respiratory tract and it will help to reduce the difficulty in bringing out the secretions from the respiratory tract and it helps to dilate the bronchi and also it increases the vital capacity of the lungs and it helps to relieve or reduce dyspnea or breathing difficulty. Next we can see regarding the types of nebulizers. So there are so many types of nebulizers in that most important types are jet nebulizers and ultrasonic nebulizers. So this is a jet nebulizer. It is also known as a compressor. Why it is called as a compressor? Because it has, this device has a compressed air or oxygen. When the liquid medications, sorry, and the compressed air passes through the liquid medication that will be converted into fine particles of aerosol so that the patient can, can be easily inhaled into the lungs. And another type of nebulizers are ultrasonic nebulizers. An ultrasonic nebulizers which has an electronic uh, oscillator and this uh, will generate a high frequency of ultrasonic wave. And that will produce or that will cause uh, mechanical vibration of the liquid medication in so that it will be converted into fine particles of aerosol so that we, the patient can inhale into the deeper respiratory tract. These are the two main type of uh, nebulizers that is jet nebulizers and ultrasonic nebulizers. Next we can see what are the articles needed for nebulization procedure. First of all, a clean tray containing ne nebulizer. So this is the nebulizer or it is also known as a compressor. And it, it is attached with the nebulizer tubings and a nebulizer cup. So you can attach a face mask or a mouthpiece to it. Then you need a medications. Medication usually supplied in a single dose, single dose plastic containers or in a bottle. So if it is in the bottle form of medication, you have to take it with a sterile syringe. And some medications uh, like a bronchodilator or steroid medication which have to be taken and it is diluted with the normal saline. For that also you can use uh, sterile syringes. Then you need a cotton that is normal saline saturated cotton you can take uh, that is for wiping the medication, medication cup and uh, face mask. 
then if it is needed diluent you can take that is normal saline or a sterile water then you need a kidney tray kidney tray for discarding the waste then you need a stethoscope for checking the um, breathe sounds before and after the procedure usually patient is having any respiratory disorders there will be abnormal respiratory sounds and you need a, a medication card you have to prepare a medication card the medication card should contain patient name age sex diagnosis and date of administration it also include name of the drug dose of the drug route frequency and action of the medication so i have taken beauty code as, as for nebulization so the dose of the medication is 0.5 mg in 2 ml root is inhalation and frequency is vd so 9 am and 9 pm usually considering as the frequency and the action of this beauty code is anti inflammatory that is anti inflammatory action on the airways then common medications we can use used for nebulization procedure is astaly ipraven beauty code or beauty mist flohe dioli so these medications so the most of these medication have a bronchodilation action and anti inflammatory action so these medication can be used for nebulization you need a sputum cup so this can be used by the patient for the expectoration of the sputum this much article is needed for the nebulization procedure next we can move on to nebulization procedure before that we have to do the preliminary assessment so we should check the doctor's order in the patient record so according to the doctor's order we have to prepare the medication card so the doctors may prescribe the medication and its dose or the frequency everything should be checked and properly written in the medication card especially for the children it will be the medication will be ordered by the doctors according to their age or weight and usually it is diluted with the normal saline then we have to uh, assess the patient respiratory status especially the breath sounds and the respiratory rate also can be assessed most of the patient with the respiratory disorders they may have the abnormal breath sounds and also we can check the pulse rate if the patient uh, is using bronchodilator or steroid type of medication there will be chances of increase in the pulse rate next we can see the preparation of the patient so what are things we have to be prepared before doing the nebulization so you should prepare the patient that is we have to identify the patient according to according uh, to the all identification data and we have to explain the procedure to the patient then how to provide a comfortable sitting or semi fowler's position or fowler's position can be given to the patient this position gives maximum lung expansion or diaphragmatic exertion then it should be the nebulization procedure should be done in a well lighted and well ventilated area next we can see the procedure as you all know before any procedure you have to do the hand washing after hand washing you have to take all the articles and we have to prepare the medication and pour it into the medication cup so before that you should check the medication with the medication card so already we have written the medication into the medication card you have to check it check the rescue so now we are taking a rescue that is beauty pot rescue we are check, uh, taking and how to uh, check the or uh, we have to compare the medication with the medication card that is it is a beauty pot medication the dose is 2.5 mg in uh, 2 ml of medication and the expiry date also you should check then only we have to administer the medication as you all know before any type of uh, administration of medication we have to check it three times so after checking what should be done is you have to open the nebulizer cup so it is having a tubing and a nebulizer cup will be there then you have to do the cleaning of nebulizer cup as well as the face mask so with the normal saline saturated cotton can be used and it will be cleaned with that then we have to clean the face mask also then discard the waste then after that we have to take the medication that is it is in the respiratory form so we have to make a twisted motion so the respiratory can be 
making a twisted motion so that it will be opened. And you have to pour it into the medication cup or the nebulizer cup. Excuse it and you can pour it into the nebulizer cup. Then discard the press tube. Then after that you can close it. Then you can connect the two bins into the nebulizer. Attaching the two bins into the nebulizer, then we have to do the plugging. So to see that what is the working condition of nebulizer. If there is if there is a fine mist uh, produced means that indicates that it is in the good working condition. Then after that we can place it over the patient face. Before the uh, before taking the nebulization, we can explain the uh, patient that how they can take the breathing. So they can take the breathing through mouth and nose alternatively. If it is possible, they can hold the breath for seconds and exhale. So this will help for the maximum dispersal of medication into the deeper respiratory tract. So we can do that procedure. So we have to place the uh, face mask. Then after that, after that switch on the nebulizer. During the procedure, we can check the any signs of complications like uh, tremors, giddiness, palpitation and all. And when the medications are completely aerosolized from the bottom of the medication cup or the nebulizer cup, we can stop the procedure. After the procedure, we can instruct the patient that they can do the deep breathing and cuffing so that they can expectorate the sputum into the sputum mug. Then post procedure care. So you should do the hand washing and after that you have to disassemble the articles. So we can wash the nebulizer cup, then face mask and tubings with the soap and water and dry it and uh, store it in a proper place. Then we have to do the recording of the procedure with the date, time and what type of medication is used, dose and what is the condition of the patient before and after the procedure and what type of the characteristics of uh, sputum which is produced by the patient. Sometimes patient may develop signs of complications like uh, giddiness, tremors, palpitation and all. If the patient is using steroid type of medication for a prolonged period, there must be a chances of getting oral infections like oral candidiasis. So we can instruct the patient that after the procedure, they can rinse their mouth properly. So some medication, they may cause irritation to the skin and eyes. So we can tell the patient that after the procedure, they can wash their face and eyes with the water. This is all about the procedure. Hope you all understood the procedure. Thank you.